It's Wednesday, December 27th here at the West End Gun Club. It's the second day in a row of shooting for me. I was out at Desert Marson Range yesterday in Palmdale to true up my gun, my NRL Hunter gun, in preparation for next month's match. But I'm out here today to do a run through of the January 2024 NRL 22 course of fire. Uh, it's already light out here. I got out here a little bit later than I normally would, but I wanted to just stay in and take care of a few things at home before I got to the range. Um, it's right around seven o'clock right now. Yeah, seven eleven. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get some, get all the uh, targetry out and set up a couple props, and then we'll start the run through. The first stage in the January 2024 NRL 22 course of fire that we're going to run through is called Shape Up for 2024. 120 second part time, 12 rounds. We have multiple targets here. Uh, five targets in total. We have two different double hangers at 60 yards with one inch targets each 30 feet apart. Then we have three two and a half inch targets on single hangers each at 93 yards, 15 feet apart. So basically, the 60 yard targets are 30 feet apart, and then the 93 yard targets are. 30 feet apart with one in the middle. So 15, 15, 15. Uh, yeah, basically no restrictions here. You're gonna start standing six feet behind the prop. So we'll have to figure out something here. Again, we don't have, I guess we, yeah, we have six feet technically. Um, six feet behind the prop, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, engage the targets with one shot each in the following manner of order. From one of the tips, you're gonna shoot targets one, three, five, and two. From tip number two, another tip, you're gonna shoot one, four, and two. Then from the third tip, you're gonna shoot one, three, two, five, one. <laughs> so you're gonna to have to look at the diagram on the course of fire. Basically, as I've described, you have the two 60 yard targets and the three 93 yard targets. And from left to right, it's gonna go 60 yards, one, then two, then going up to 93, three, four, and five. So one, two, three, four, five, left to right. So when you shoot, from the first tip, you're gonna shoot one, three, five, two, and it says forms a rectangle. So you're gonna shoot one near, near left, far left, far right, near right. And you're gonna to switch to another tip, then you're gonna shoot one, four, two, which forms a triangle, which is gonna basically be uh, kind of the corner, top corner leading. So you're gonna go one, so near left, far middle, near right. Then you're gonna to switch to the third tip, which is gonna be one, three, two, five, one, so which forms two right triangles. So you're gonna shoot near left, far left, near right, far right, near left. It's actually pretty simple when you think about it. Basically, move to a tip, shoot a rectangle, shoot the corners, move to another tip, make a triangles, and then you know, shoot near, far, near, and then the whole right triangle thing, you just basically start from the left, work your way out, come back to the near right, work your way out, come back near left. It's really simple if you think about it. A lot of people, I've seen some grumblings on some uh, discussions already about this course of fire, about how complex it is. I have my complaints about this course of fire, but I'll, I'll leave that for the end. But let's go ahead and run through this one. Middle tree. Double triangle. Oh, 
Where's that target? Oh, 1.2022. Barely under time, because they give you three tenths. Whew, this one's a tough stage. Okay. I dropped one, too. I did, I dropped one. This stage is definitely on the advanced side as far as NRL 22. Not only are you moving from tip to tip on the tank trap, which is the general basic difficulty aspect of any stage is adding movement uh you also have the fact that you're changing your target array so you're moving to different targets on each tip and at to couple with that though um having multiple targets in a stage isn't new the fact that we have this this target so spread apart so that you're constantly changing your direction of fire and you're going to be shifting your position you should be shifting your position in order to best square off your body to the gun and if you saw me during this course of fire, or this stage rather, I shot off both feet on the ground and I kind of crouched forward. The added difficulty for the West End Gun Club is that we shoot an angle. I don't know why I just didn't shoot off my knee. Um, even though I can't rest my elbow here without a body fill bag or body support bag, it's still more stable than me crouching forward, crouching forward and angling my body up to look at that four degree angle. So. Tip for those going to the West End Gun Club to shoot our, our uh, venue, take a knee. Even if you don't have a body feel bag, it's just more comfortable that your gun naturally rests, especially if it's balanced. Let it naturally rest and you can just pull the trigger without even touching the gun and it should just not, it should be 100% stable. But uh, that's one thing here. Uh, the second difficulty aspect for the West End Gun Club is we have such a small impact area for our rimfire range that all the targets are gonna be mixed up, for, especially with this one, since it's so spread apart, that we're basically occupying both extremes of the range for this one stage, that we're gonna have a mixture of targets for different stages. So what I, what I usually do, though, is I add different color flags for each stage. If you ever come to our match, you're gonna see that we do that, so it's easier to pick out your targets for that stage. But uh, it's still kinda of hard to see those colors sometimes, so that's an added difficulty there. But number one tip for everyone, that I always give to new shooters, because I always see them do this, is that get to the stage, they get down behind their gun, get behind the scope, and they're trying to find that target. Gotta get, I tell them, get just shoulder up, but keep your head above your scope, your eye above your scope, and just look for the target first and move your gun with it. Then once you get in that general direction, go ahead and get behind the scope. But even then, a lot of them are maxed out. They're, they're running 20, 25 magnification, and so they get there, they can't find the target, and then they waste all their time. And then you see them doing this with their, with their support hand, as they're constantly dialing back the magnification, dialing it in, dialing back, dialing it in, and they're hunting for that target. And after, after all that, two minutes goes by and they fire like maybe one or two shots. So definitely gotta learn how to line up your gun, get your body squared up to the target, then get behind the scope. Anyway, that's it for this stage. Let's move on to the next stage. If you're wondering why I'm wearing the binal harness while doing the run through of the NRL 22 course of fire, I'm simply trying to get some time shooting a rifle while wearing the harness because I will likely be wearing the harness when I'm competing in NRL hunter matches. So I just want to get the feel of it while I'm shooting a rifle. In any case, the next stage of fire we're going to run through is called first prone of 2024, but no napping. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have the KYL rack, but they're split across two distances. We have a quarter inch and half inch at 40 yards and we have a three quarter inch and one inch at 65 yards. Restrictions, you must conduct a magazine change after shooting the first position. If a magazine change isn't conducted, then any impacts from the new position will not count until a magazine change has been conducted. This is the bonus time stage, so you get bonus points with extra uh, time a lot, or time left over from 120 seconds, 120 seconds. You're gonna start standing rifle in all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, you'll build a prone supported position on the left of the firing line and engage the targets in the following order. Near, large, small, far, large, small, large. You will then drop your magazine, remove your magazine, eject the live round if semi-idle and move to the right position five feet away. Load your second magazine and engage the targets in the following order. Far, large, far, small, near, large, near, small, near, large. 
So again, first position, you're gonna shoot near, large, small, far, large, small, large. Switch positions, change mags, far, large, small, near, large, small, large. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You're gonna always start large, but you're gonna switch up where you start and uh, it's always gonna be the three shots on the second, you know, after you shoot the first bank, you, then the second bank with three shots. So two, three, two, three. Uh, let's go ahead and start, try this stage. small half mill half mill large small half mill oh barely got that parallax Large, small, large. Eighty-seven nine six. Eighty-seven nine six. There honestly really isn't much to say here. It's a very really straightforward stage. Just two K wild banks. Get down to a prone position. Two shots, large, small, switch to the next KOL, large, small, large, move to the next position, drop your mag, put in a new one. Far, large, small, near, large, small, large. It's just target memorization, just knowing the stage beforehand. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, the only added difficulty for Western Gun Club members is the fact that we have to shoot the KOL. The first one's on the ground, the other one's at an angle, so you are changing your angle of fire, your inclination of fire. That's the only added difficulty here, but I still finished with 87 seconds elapsed. A lot of people can shoot faster, but it all depends too if the KYL swings. It's still swinging while you need to re-engage that next target because you shoot large, small, then large, with the large is still smoothing, then that can cause problems in terms of uh, losing some seconds. But other than that, you, you'll finish under time for sure. Let's go and move on to the next stage in the course of fire. Next stage of fire is called running into 2024, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We only have a single target this time. It's a three inch on a single hanger at 100 yards. No real restrictions here. You're going to start standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On a start signal, you'll engage the target with one shot, hit or miss from 10 different positions on the pyramid. No position may be repeated. Note the match director will divide each center two by four to allow for two separate positions. So the I believe the intent here is that. This no longer counts as like one, two, three positions. Now this is one. These are only two distinct positions here. So it's bisecting and then in half, and then you have each rung. So basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it sounds like those are your ten positions. And you can do it from any order. And I, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's see how this one goes.
go low so I don't get change sides. One fourteen oh one. This is pretty much your typical pyramid stage. Ten positions, ten shots. I don't know what else to say about this other than you got to practice moving and shooting. It's a three inch target, so there's a lot of room for error here to take some quick shots. And I took some quick shots with a lot of wobble, but I was accepting that wobble given it was relatively within the target. So. My only, my only tip here for people is once you see a good shot, take it. Don't sit on it. Um, that's a lot of, that has a lot to do with techniques used in high power rifle or service rifle. When you're shooting standing at 200 yards, uh, you're basically, you don't wait for, you know, don't let, wait for the crossers to settle on the target, right? And then shoot because you'll eventually just, you're standing, you're eventually going to sway off the target. So the, the goal is once you get your reticle or your sight, front sight on target, pull the trigger. That's it. And, and if anything, you should be anticipating the lead into that target. So that's kind of my only, my only advice here is just once you see a good shot, take it and move. Don't dwell on it trying to let, oh, okay, it's going to settle, it's going to settle. Okay, it's going to be a little more stable if I wait a few more seconds. Just take that shot if you see it. Once you see that good reticle on that in the middle of that target, pull the trigger. Anyway, that's it for this stage. Let's move on to the next one. The next stage we're running through is called New Year's Exercise Routine, and I had to read this a few times before we're talking about it. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have three targets, all at 78 yards on individual double hangers. They're two inch targets at 78 yards, spaced 15 feet apart. So when you're looking down range, the middle one will be target one. The far one or far right one will be target two, far left will be target three. So one, two, three facing down range, which matches the position on the rooftop as it's displayed here. Position one will be the center. Position two will be at the top or right. Position three will be bottom left when you're facing downrange. No forward support bag or bipod may touch the ground when shooting from position three, the bottom left. You're going to start standing rifle in all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the center target will be engaged from position one, the right target will be engaged from position two, and the left target will be engaged from position three on the rooftop. So matching position to target number. So here's the order that you're going to shoot in. Position one, center. Position two, right, right, so that's two shots. Position one, center, one shot. Position three, left, left, so target three, two shots. Position one, center, one shot. Position two, right, uh, two shots. Position one, center. So it's, it's kind of confusing the way I read it out, like going over it, so if you read through the, the course of fire, you'll understand, but it's basically position one, target one, one shot. Right, right, two shots. Center, one shot. Bottom, left. Target three, two shots, back to center, one shot, right, right, two shots, center, one. So it's just constantly moving center, right, center, left, center, right, center. So you're just working your way middle, up, back down, back up, and back down. And it's always going to be one shot center and two shots from the extreme ends. Uh, that's kind of it. Let's go ahead and shoot it, and we'll see how it goes. Sliding. Definitely should have my claws for this stage. Oh, this is gonna 
it caused problems here. One twenty point two three. Stage is relatively difficult in my opinion. The movement isn't too big of a deal because you're taking multiple shots on at least two of the positions. However, it's the actual stabilizing that position in general that's causing a lot of the problems. So I elected to go bipod or my sky pod up front, run it in this weird angle. So I have this one, this leg out as much as I can, but it's short. And then I extended that one as long as it can go to get it on the rooftop and however it is slipping to some degree because i'm using rubber feet so you may want to elect to use a claw foot a spike foot on the rooftop i just replaced my sky pod with rubber feet because i tend to use it on concrete and i've been eating up the uh, original feet on those and i do have replacements but uh it does slip a little bit However, I think I could have angled it. I had this one out to the midpoint. And if I put it to the shallowest point, that might have been better for me because it gets more of the weight above on the top. So it slips less. However, uh, for this though, I found this bag was too tall because I was, we, we were shooting at an up angle. So I was not, you know, I was having difficulty getting my gun angled up. So probably gonna go with a smaller bag for sure on the stage or somehow just like not just kind of use the corner of the corner of the corner of the uh, bag. However, your other option here is to not use your bipod and it's just to shoot off of a bag. That is an option. So we'll just quickly demonstrate that here. You can opt to just shoot off a bag, at least for this, especially for this position three, probably easier. But when you get down to one of these positions here, it could cause problems as far as trying to maintain that 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 firing position so uh it might be easier I, it feels like i can jam this up get my bag up and then kind of hold my bag in place and it seems actually pretty decent to be able to take shots in this position so that might be an option too and you can go prone here um for the bottom of the uh the rooftop. And the only other comment I have about this stage though, is it could vary from venue to venue, how they have the rooftop set up. But if you notice, I have these two two by fours split across the side here. That was because early on, we had a lot of people who couldn't stay on the rooftop for some odd reason. Um, they just couldn't get grip on there. So we put these here for support so you can stay on the rooftop. However, on these types of stages of fire, these stage designs this does give you a little bit of extra support for the gun if you're shooting from that position so uh are we going to ding people for doing that for example i think during the stage my bipod might have slipped down and it was resting on this two by four not really we're not going to ding anybody i guess that's just the way it's going to be uh but i know some people some some uh venues have rooftops where they have slats across the entire length or the height of the rooftop for more support or more stability or traction or whatever you want to call it. But anyway, this is a very difficult stage. Definitely practice it. Think about how you're going to support your gun. Are you going to go bipod or are you just going to go bag? I think many people will go bag simply because uh, their bipods don't, don't allow for this type of position unless you have a sky pod. Other bipods just can't really have that much uh, flexibility and adjustment. Anyway, let's move on to the last fifth and final stage of this course of fire.
Last stage of fire running through is called 2024 is running on all cylinders, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have w one single target at 70 yards. It's a one and a half on a double hanger. No real restrictions here. Start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, you engage the target in the following order. Two shots off the two gallon bucket, three shots off the five gallon bucket, two shots off the three tire stack, three shots off the fifth five gallon drum. We'll repeat that one more time just in case I misread. Two off the two gallon, three off the five gallon, two off the tires, three off the 55 gallon drum. Pretty straightforward. Um, just got to figure out how you want to shoot this. And uh, yeah, let's see how this one goes. Not sure how many, how much time I had on the clock because it didn't pick up any of my shots because it was muffled. I did drop, I think I might have dropped one. I'll have to see on the replay. I replayed the target cam footage off the back of my camera and I did make all, all of my hits. Just barely grazed one <clears throat> off the bucket. So I, I thought about shooting bipod and maybe in prior months, Maybe even last year, I would have elected to shoot bipod off of all of this, use my bipod in a sitting position and just rest on these buckets and like straddle the bucket. But I find that's kind of, it gets a little bit difficult to control. And so I found that just running the bag seems to be the best way to go. And so I ran front bag. I ran front bag prone off the two and a half gallon, or the two gallon bucket. I did a sitting position off the five gallon bucket. Um, I was able to scunch down for that. If you try to shoot prone, you might be able to do it, especially with our angle. I elected to shoot sitting, it was fine. Although I stacked my, I put my bag, um, I kind of put my bag kind of vertical like this. Oh, my GoPro is still running, but um, vertical like that. And then from the, from the tires, I just used my bag on the rear of this tire, angle it up, it was stable enough. And then here I left my rifle as I shot it off the 55 gallon drum. And this is real, it's really stable here. So that's how I like to run. I think that's how most people will want to run it. Using the bipod as a front rest gets fancy and it is stable off of the tire and the drum, but it just takes time to deploy. And if you're, if you're really good at deploying that, go for it. But I feel like the, the bag will probably be the easiest and the quickest to deploy. Anyway, that's it for all five stages. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up and then uh, make my way out of the range. It's 11.30, I'm all packed up, about to roll out of here. Been out here for almost four hours and I will have to say I'm exhausted. Not sure why, but something about this course of fire is very tiring. Maybe it's because I shot yesterday and out at the range again today and maybe that's why I'm tired. I haven't eaten since four yesterday afternoon, so I guess maybe that's probably need more calories. 
But I will say this is feels like the most annoying course of fire all this season. I don't know. There's something about it. Uh, the way you have to lay out all these targets away from each other in a certain manner. And then I rolled out the rooftop, the tank trap, and then the tires. <laughs> it just felt very tiring today. I, granted, I don't think it's any more target points and more props than any other course of fire. But I don't know. It just feels feel very annoying. I don't know why. In any case, there were two stages that I recall that were you're going to run up against time, or at least I ran up against time. But having run through them once already now, I have an idea that how I can shoot it a little bit more optimally, and hopefully on match day I can shoot, you know, with time to spare. And I think in general, there isn't anything too abnormally difficult about this course of fire. It's just memorization and then making sure you have good fundamentals and you can acquire a good staple position, side picture, side, al side alignment, and a clean trigger pull in a very quick manner. Because uh, that's kind of just the goal of any NRL, PRS style type of shooting is get into your position as fast as possible, get a acquire target, align sights, and pull trigger, squeeze trigger, all in a very f efficient manner, and then move. So practice those fundamentals, and you should be fine. Uh, our next match will be for Sunday of January. We're back to regular schedule because December we had to push it back, uh, push it forward, or bring it up, pull, bring it up in the in the month, the second week because Christmas Eve was last Sunday, and we weren't going to hold a match on Christmas Eve. And they even shut down the rage on Christmas Eve. So um, our next match will be for Sunday I, or of January. I can't recall what date that is, but uh, if you're interested, come on out to shoot that match. Definitely sign up. And this will be my last range session i think for the calendar year there's only a few more days left being the 27th so i have a lot of stuff to do or take care of during my christmas break or my week off from work and so this will be my last range visit to, uh, for this week at least until the second or third maybe of next year calendar year anyway hopefully everyone has a good new year's eve new year's day be safe and hopefully you can kick off the 2024 calendar year on a good note thanks for watching i'll see you in the next vlog one last note for all you West End Gun Club members, if you got your new membership card in the mail for 2024, you probably saw the note about how the coding on there could rub off if you stack your cards. I know a lot of people like to stack all their ID cards and credit cards in a stack and just hold them like that in their pocket. Um, it could rub off the finish. But if you ever see me on the range at the West End Gun Club, hit me up. I will have some of these sleeves on me. They're little sleeves. I got these in bulk from Amazon. And I have plenty of them. So if you ever see me, grab one for me so you can put your membership card your ID card and the little plastic sleeve 